it is about St. Patrick's Day, so I thought I would try something new and different this year. Um, we love work trades and basically all things barter. So this year, I uh, loaned out my tractor to a local bison ranch, and uh, in exchange, we got to go through their employee box and scored a whole bunch of meat. So we're going to go with corned bison this year. Normally with corned beef, you use a brisket. I think that might be a little boring considering the circumstance. So this is a hump roast. I have cooked these in the past like pot roast and they're pretty tasty. And uh, they have a whole lot of fat in them, which I actually think is the best part. I know bison is, uh, you know, supposed to be super lean and good for you and blah, blah, blah. And it is, but the side effect of it being super lean is that it often doesn't have a whole lot of flavor. So a cut like this helps to overcome that. I'm using a recipe out of this book, which we got turned on to through a guy named Stephen Ranella. You might know him if you follow this channel. And uh, it's got some great recipes for curing meat. So what I'm gonna use, you can see I have a super safe bookmark, is this corned beef recipe. Um, I've never made corned beef before, so we'll see how this goes. My general rule is whenever a recipe calls for, say, three cloves of garlic, I automatically double that. So we're gonna dice that up and put it into the brine mixture, which is pretty basic, water, kosher salt. Um, it called for pink salt, which I know is a little uh, more of a processed um, product. I don't have any, nor do I intend to use it, but I stuck some Himalayan pink salt in there. We'll see what that does. Salt is salt, right? And then also some sugar. William and I debated for a little while over the sugar bit. <laughs> but since it's my first time making this recipe, I like to go by the recipe as much as I can. So we uh, went ahead and put the sugar in. All right, we got our garlic and our pickling spice in there. Now I'm gonna bring that to a simmer as directed and then add my meat. One of the lovely things about this time of year and cooking this type of uh, food is that you can do it on the wood stove. So don't have to use any of the propane for the cook stove and can just kind of set it and forget it for a while. You can see we've got our temperature gauge on there so I can kind of monitor it and make sure everything's copacetic. Um, I cook a lot on the wood stove. I've made a couple of other videos featuring wood stove cookery so far, and I'm excited to do even more. All right, my liquid here has fully dissolved the solids, except for the pickling spice and garlic, of course. So now I'm going to set it <coughs> to the side here on one of these warming shelves to cool off. Then I'll move it to the countertop, and then finally I'll move it into the fridge. All right, my water or brine is chilled and I've set my um, hump roast down in there and as you can see it's floating a little bit so I'm going to take a plate and set it down on top to weight it down and then stick it in the fridge for several days like six. So this plate is actually perfect for the job it's what's called a second um, and my grandparents bought all of their plates as seconds from a stoneware factory in the Bay Area because they're less expensive. Um, so I wound up with all of their plates. So this one is just gonna sit right on top there and it's gonna weight down the meat enough to submerge it. Moment of truth, it is St. Patrick's Day. It's been a full week that this has been brining. Hopefully this uh, comes up pretty easily. Looks like it's going to. Ta-da! Now the directions say to rinse that off thoroughly and then cook it. Um, the directions say three hours. I don't think we need to go that long because this is about half the size of the one that was called for. So the hump roast corned is simmering away. Um, I put just enough water in to cover and then I put the pickling spices and garlic in there as well. And we're just going to let that sit tight for the next hour and a half, and then I'll check it. We've been boiling away for about an hour and a half, and I am about to throw this in the oven. I'm gonna take the meat out and put it on a pan, because personally, I like my corned beef crisped up. Looking good. 
Um, I just cut into this one and it seems to be fairly tender. We shall see. I like my potatoes a little more crispy than that, so maybe I'll throw them in the pan or something. And then, of course, we got cabbage to go along with it. Yum. Well, there were no leftovers, so I'm going to say that was a success. Have fun. See you next time.